any system or the any restoration, the occlusion is very, very necessary. So the later on we had a lecture of Professor uh, Fazul Rahman sir, and he had given the lecture for the occlusion. He had given brief about what we are going to do with the full mouth rehabilitation, how we should do with the segments. This is how we have carried on with Dr. Fazul Rahman sir, and he had given the fantastic lecture. Later on, then we had a lecture by Professor Kiran Patel just two or three days back. Dr. Kiran Patel lecture was amazing lecture and he showed what are the tricks and tips are there to be a successful in corticobasal or in strategic implant loss or basal implant loss. After that, now my turn is there and this is how to avoid failures in corticobasal implant loss. But this lecture is basically I am targeting those who are already doing corticobasal implants. Because each individual, each doctor has his own learning curve is there. Anup, is okay? I'm audible. Is everything okay? Yes, yes. Now each individual has a learning curve is there. And what happened? Uh, like any system, if you are going to start, if you are going to have a failure earlier in life, then there are the two kind of thoughts will be there. One thought will be, hey, come on, I'm not made. The other thing is, or the other school of thought is, that why I had a failure, and why it is successful everywhere, or why it is good by my mentor's hand, and why I had a failure. That means something is missing by me. So, it, the thing is, that I am going to share my learning curve among you all. The learning curve and what in these all years I realized that what are the mistakes I did and how to correct these mistakes, how to avoid by doing a mistake. There's nothing like a textbook is available, or like what we have done, read of the Jimmy Black of the restorations and all the uh, like advantage books we are there. So we know A to Z and how to proceed, how to complete the restoration and how to proceed and complete a root care and treatment, or the other, or prosthetics and everything. But I can't worry, in respect to all the other, uh, uh, the, other uh, the other sciences, this technology is new, and every mentor, by his own experiences, they are writing, they are explaining the techniques, the new innovations is coming out, and that's how we are learning. I just give you an example, like those doctors or those my friends or seniors who are doing the implants, like say, before 2003 onwards or before 2000 onwards. At that time, at that time, we always used to be taught that if I'm having an extraction socket of five millimeter and I want to do a place implant, immediate implant, we have to choose an implant diameter of five millimeter to fill up the socket. The later on, when we have seen that our implants are stable, but all the facial aspect of the implant, the bone around the implant is all dissolved, then we realize our mistake. And then they have started teaching us that you have to you have to respect the jumping distance. Because if your implant is just touching the buccal cortical or it's compressing the buccal cortical, when you're able to compare with the buccal and parietal cortical, buccal cortical always give up. It's always and always going to resolve. So we have started using that if you have a socket of, let's say, 5 millimeter, we start off 6 millimeter, we have started using a implant of 4.5 meter diameter. And later on, when we were doing the, like, uh, the mentors were teaching us, we used to have the implant diameter of 6 millimeter with, I was using a phyllet to implant. We used to have six millimeter diameter implant. But now what is this? The thing is most of the implant system and most of the mentors and seniors and our junior colleagues and our friends, they're operating. They never want to go more.